Greetings gamers, welcome to part number 72 of my Let's Play Fire Emblem 10 Radiant Dawn and it is time to finish off this episode or finish off this chapter, at least I'm going to try to. Um, I don't know necessarily that I will be able to, that's 20 damage, 34, I can do this, perfect. So all I need to do is defeat both of these spirits which can be done pretty darn easily by Kanegis and Shinan. Perfect. You might have an extra 15 defense sitting on those bases, but uh, I have the capacity to take you out. Alright, so Mist is obviously Ike support here, so. Heal up with Fortify. Uh, that didn't help much, but it will help. Hello, King Tavarn. I thought I might see you. Only the strongest reach the top. It's only natural that you would be among them. You know what? I don't believe you're the big, bad, evil guy you want us to think you are. What could you be talking about? Ah, I was right. I see it in your eyes. I've been looking around for a while and learned a bit about spotting fakes. So now that your secret's out, maybe you'd like to open up and tell me, who are you really? And of course, the animations do still exist for the fights with the bosses, and I do appreciate this. Ike needs to hit both of his hits. If he does not hit both of his hits, um, that might be an actual reset. Because Sephiram will heal up back to full. He heals with Mantle 40 HP per turn. Plus, he's going to heal some amount on these cover tiles right here. I don't remember how much it is, but even if he doesn't, it doesn't matter because the spirits will heal him. I have to ask, Sephiran, what are you after? What's this all about? Why do you wish to know? You would achieve nothing by learning my reasons. You would help no one. I lose lost faith in lesser beings and desire an end to them. That's all. So why did you save me on that day? May I ask you a favor, Ike? Tell me how you feel about it now. Can you bear recalling those horrific memories? Yes, I'm fine now, but I suppose at the time I wouldn't have been able to take it. All beings endure tragedies for as long as they continue to live. It has always been the case that suffering is unavoidable. War is also unavoidable, so it's kind of weird that that cutscene with Ashira and all these folks were talking like, like she was so, you know... I can't stop you from, no matter how much I admonish you, I can't stop you from fighting. Well, of course you can't, because war is unavoidable. Conflict will happen. This is just the truth in mankind. <laughs> and this grim reality plays out over and over, in every country, under every ruler. As long as there are beings who feel, they will feel pain. So what? We should all just give up and die? Put it behind you. Deal with it. Do not make light of this. I'm not, Severan. I'm extremely grateful that you once helped me through a terrible time. But I have accepted that occasionally we all have to deal with hard times. I've had pain, I've had suffering, and I've had have gotten up and moved on. I don't try to forget what happened that day, I just accept it. And neither that or anything else will ever stop me. You are a strong man, Ike, son of Gwaine, but not everyone is as strong as you. Alright, Ike, you have to hit. I actually find this light magic way more beautiful than the Rex Aura animation. Not even a full level. <laughs> At last, I'm dying. What he truly wants. The reason why they said he attempted suicide multiple times, because he couldn't actually perform it. 
What? It can't be true. Our apostle? Can't believe it myself, but the senators made an announcement. It must be true. Pardon me? Has something happened to the apostle? Oh, my lord, save. The apostle. She... She's dead. What? How? According to the senator's announcement, she was assassinated by the Serenus herons. They look so gentle, like they couldn't harm a fly. But they're nothing but beasts, no better than the other subhumans. Peace, friends. This is simply not possible. The Heron tribe could never assassinate anyone. They... She's dead, isn't she? Those damn subhumans. Every last one of them's got to die for the Apostle. That's the truth. They're nothing but monsters. Oh, I wish I could kill them myself. You can. Grab a weapon. Grab a torch. Come on. We'll burn that forest to ash and wipe them all out. No! You mustn't! What's wrong, my lord Sage? You don't look well. Are you feeling all right? <clears throat> ah! Wings! From the Satan's back! Wings! He's one of them! He's a monster! You're nothing but a lying, subhuman piece of filth! How dare you pretend to be one of us! Get him! The medallion must be quelled. I cannot allow this madness to come to pass. Judgment! The goddess's judgment! I must say, I have to heavily sympathize with Sephiran, or Liran. Genocide and all the things he has seen all his life, uh, I heavily sympathize. I'm actually on Sephiran's side. Hey, why not? Why not destroy all of Tellius? Especially because Shinon isn't the boss of the Grail mercenaries. <laughs> Sephiran. Sephiran, hold up. Open your eyes. Yune, help me. What should I do? What? Really? Okay, I'll try. Sun... Naki. Sephiran, you can hear me. S somebody help. He's wounded. I'm sorry, Sanaki. The doors leading to Ashira won't open while he's alive. I can't save him. That's correct. Thank you, Yune. I'm sincerely grateful. 
Death is all you've ever wanted since this started. Everything else has been little more than a terrible side effect. I'm sorry that this was your only goal, but I am happy to help you achieve it. Sephiran, I see now what you were going through. It must have been hard. I'm going to stop right there. Only because I have to say a couple of things. The, anybody who would ever, you know, say, Gamer Man, you, you blow this up way too much out of proportion. The pro plot contrivances aren't that bad. Blah, blah, blah. Sephiran has the power to teleport and has had this power for as long as we can possibly know let alone the fact that he is a legus and can fly he's he has wings he might not be able to transform but he still has wings they don't just fall off because he was a parent to a a a, a bjork and legus child that's not how that works so he could still fly my question is why didn't he go through teleportation or flying to the serenus forest and have them all retreat to goldoa because, being real with you, he could have prevented that massacre entirely if he knew about it. If he was there, if he was capable of understanding these people's plots and these pla these plans that they had, I would have immediately, as Sephiran, as Liron, flown there, teleported there, did whatever I possibly could and say, said, hey, we need to retreat to Goldoa. And that's exactly what I would have done. It would have, it would have stemmed that massacre. It's very unfortunate that uh, all these things are happening. I do like how that there's a lot of supposed trial of these overarching, I want to say, plot lines and stories and whatever. But the problem with Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn story is that once you meddle with gods, the divine, once you meddle with ages of thousands of years and not just like right now, once you meddle with anything beyond the immediacy of a story's scope, you ruined the story, and I'll tell you why. Because it is not possible within the mind of man to make a story as grand as, like I said, the Bible is. You cannot do it. That's the reason why most stories pick apart little tiny tidbits from the Bible and will try to tell some sort of metaphorical understanding or meaning behind them or their own spin on it. You can't do it. It's just not possible. It's the reason why for thousands of years people have tried debating the Bible. And, well, if it was debatable, if it was fallacy, people would have found it out years and years ago. And the belief in God would have ceased to exist years and years ago. It's not just a religious appetite for being religious. Mankind at, at our core, we have no desire to be religious. And that's, that's just reality. We have a desire to be monstrous. We have a desire to be wicked, evil, fiendish towards each other. So the fact of the matter is, is that these plot lines are so very, are so very nonsensical because of this. It's the reason why newer Fire Emblem, like Three Houses and others that I won't even name because they're even more horrible than Three Houses, are so bad because they're trying to do the same thing. Thousands of years of history in a single game. You can't possibly comprehend it. You're dealing with people who are basically so-called deities in, in these games and they have this history and that history and they've done this and that and it's all disconnected. And it makes stories with tons of plot holes and contrivances and issues that basically makes the story itself trip on itself. And it's very unfortunate because Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn are great games to play, fun games to play. They're just terrible games to read. <laughs> I wish I could have helped you. Please, don't mourn for me. I'm not worth it. I'm so sorry. I wanted to help you. I really did. Forget about me. This path was my decision, my tragic mistake. Lady Sanaki, I want you to have this. This is the Rubel Gem. Wear it in memory of me. It will protect you. Please forgive me. I'm sorry I lied to you. Sephiran, don't worry. We still have all the time we spent together. Nobody can take that away. Nobody. Thank you, my lady Sunaki. Zelgius, I is waiting. Altina. Sephiran, no. Now, please, Micaiah. Don't die. You can't die. And the doors to Ashira have opened. What is waiting? What is in store for the party?
He's breathing. Sephiroth is breathing. Ah, just in time. You saved him. Thank you. Micaiah, thank you. Micaiah is completely spent. She's sorry, but she won't be able to fight in the next battle. But there's no time. Hurry. Blanker, Yune, is there something you haven't told us about you and Sephiran? He saved my life. Your, your, your life? Sephiran saved the life of a goddess? Is there something you haven't told us about Sephiran then? He'll wake up in just a moment. Then you can ask him directly. Oh, all right. I'll do that. Why did you save him? Should I not have? I can think of a few reasons why you shouldn't have. Yes. Yes, because Ike is a... <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I don't even want to begin that. Hey, get up now. Take it easy on him. He's had a hard day. Uh, 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 I... I'm alive? Leron. Blanker Yune, why, why did you? Because I want you to live. You've always taken care of me, and I couldn't bear it if it ended like this. But I've lost my all my hope, all hope in the world and the people in it. I did what I did for future generations, so they wouldn't have to live in this world. Please, Yune, let me die. I won't, Leron. I won't. Leron, now he's some kind of hero saint. If death is what you really want, then I'm not going to let it happen on my watch. I don't care what you've gone through. I don't care how much you've suffered. What you've done is unforgivable. Shut up, Ike. You, gosh, you're like two years old. You, you have seen nothing he has seen. His whole entire people were massacred, and you wanted to slay Zalgius for revenge because he killed your one father, who, by the way, killed your mother. Wow, you, you're such a pinnacle of morality. Stop it, Ike. Ajira is waiting. It's time for the final confrontation with her. You can come if you want to. And you? You're asking me to turn my back on Goddess Ajira? If you really want the total extinction of Bjork and Legu's alike, then you can just lie here like a lump. If not, this is your last chance to start rectifying your mistakes. Think hard on that. Liron, because he's protected by Mantle, would likely, and because he is a very close confidant to Ashira, would likely not be turned to stone, and I don't think this would affect him. <laughs> but Ike... I would like to know how tiles that you stand on give you physical defense. It makes sense that they give you magic because, you know, magical tiles. <laughs> I'll be waiting for you, Leron. Not complaining. I do think it's an interesting part of this game. The Rudold Gem. 15,000 experience points. Appreciated. Leron, I will not countenance this plan. Hear me, Goddess Asher. Yune's imprisonment within the medallion has begun to change you. Order and chaos. You are one being, comprising both parts. The one must naturally affect the other. Even so, I will not return Yune to this body. She is unstable. And I must be perfect in order to protect this world. It is as I have said. Yune must be destroyed. Asherah, you mustn't. You cannot survive without your opposite. Please, you must not do this. Your world still needs you. Leron, you have ever been a wise and kind-hearted child. In deference to you, I will place my faith in your kind one last time. For the next thousand years, 
I shall sleep as well. When I wake again, I hope it is to a world of peace and order, where all prosper as equals. If I do, then I will know that you have advised me well. I will reward your counsel. I will also allow Yune to return to me. I will once again be the goddess of creation, whole and complete. Ashunara, the dawn goddess, the name your ancestors gave me so long ago. I should like However, during this thousand years, if the chaos of war should arise and awaken Yune from her slumber in the medallion, I will know that you have strayed from your path, and I will punish your failure, as I will reward your success. And then you will know my judgment. You will pay for your sins, each of you to the last. In the names of our people, we vow to keep this covenant. There will be no great war between Lagos and Bjork for a thousand years. So pledge Altina of the Bjork, Degensia of the Dragon Tribes, Solon of the Beast Tribes, and I, Leron, of the Bird Tribes. If you believe during this thousand years that you have created a world that has outgrown the atrocities of war, or, if you feel the world has fallen beyond a hope of redemption, you may sing the Galder of release and awaken us both. Your heirs will possess that ability as well. Sing to awaken us, and tell us your tale. Tell us of the world your two kinds have built in our absence. We will listen and we will judge fairly and impartially. This is our covenant with you. It's her. Hashira. Ashira, it's me, Yune. Can you hear me? Please, please listen to me. You don't need to pass any more judgment. You can return the people to normal. I cannot. There are still people in my world who are made of fallible flesh. This imperfect world has passed beyond control. Now, I shall pass my final judgment. Wait, you can't violate the terms of the Covenant, Ashira. One thousand years still hasn't passed. We were woken by Golger, not by mankind's war. It doesn't matter. During my long sleep, Bjork and Legus continue to fight. The children of flesh will never learn nor grow. Time will pass, as always, but nothing can change the destiny of mankind. I don't even need to correct that. Amazing. You have to look deeper. The first judgment didn't turn everyone to stone, and I'll tell you why. Because these people are not people as we know them, Ashira. These people have become something new. People, the Zunanma, are the only living creatures of this world that we didn't create. Animals evolved to zo become Zunanma, who then became Legus and Bjork. That evolution continues today. Ashira, I'll tell you a secret you didn't know. Children can be born of both a Bjork and Legus parent. They are still very few in number, but if allowed to flourish, mankind might become anything. If the two races continue to evolve, I'm sure something wonderful will emerge. You can't just bring that to a halt. Do not claim certainty of anything. The children of this world are born of chaos, and nothing could be more uncertain. The world does not require the evolution of man. My responsibility is to protect order, the balance of all life forms. Beings that evolve without my guidance will only des destabilize and threaten this world. Because of that, you have to wipe out everything made of flesh? Is that what you're trying to say? Very well, then. You and I have nothing more to talk about. My only choice is to defeat you. Yune, do not be absurd. 
You cannot overthrow me, just as I cannot overthrow you. Of course not, but they can. Everyone, the time has come. Defeat Ashira, or everyone you love will be a statue forever. These people, they carry your blessings, Yune. You mean to fight me? Ashira, our goddess, this is the world, and we are the people you created. You make it sound as if we're some sort of filthy creatures that just decided to settle down here and cause trouble. But you kind of did. Intriguing. I don't say it like that. We're not perfect. Sometimes our brains tell us one thing, while our emotions tell us another. Very unlikely that science has grown enough in this society for them to understand brains. <laughs> and war. The more we try to avoid it, the worse it is when it become, comes to us. People are probably the dumbest creatures alive. I hate this. I really do hate this. This, I, I almost feel like the rest of this Let's Play should just be me correcting people. People are not the dumbest creatures alive. In fact, we're the most intelligent creatures alive. That's what makes us people and very different from animals and plants and everything else. I don't see any, any monkeys or elephants creating Let's Plays. <laughs> but somehow you're also the most endearing. It's your imperfections that make you so interesting. Or making houses, or building cars, or advancing in society, or adapting to anything, or whatever. Making cities and towns and, yes, animals are equal to us, right? <laughs> imperfections very similar to ours. We know that we've messed up. We'll do our best to avoid more war, but to make peace our highest priority. Ashira, just give us one more chance. All we ask is for one more chance. You expect me to reverse my judgment? The goddess of order cannot be so mercurial. My decision is final. Well, that's how it's going to be, huh? Then we will fight. And we will save our people. Make your peace with whatever the gods worship. Your end is near. My end is near? In every battle that mattered in my life, I've always been the one left standing, no matter how slim my chances. That's because of plot armor and your Mary Sueness. This battle means more than any of the others, because it's for the life of every person that I've ever cared about. I will win this fight. Alright, so... You still can only bring... Well, I'm going to be taking... Sanaki off that list, because she brings nothing to the table here. Literally nothing to the table. She doesn't have any utility, she has no staff power, and you're not defeating Ashira with magical units. You're just not. So this, this chapter has very few units at the beginning, but there are continual and endless thunder, wind, and fire spirits that will join. And they will not only join, but they will heal up Ashira. Yes, there is nine tiles of Ashira here. She is the first and most interesting boss of the Fire Emblem franchise that had multiple stages to her. First and foremost is these auras. Each aura has a different kind of stats um, than Ashira herself. So they all have 8 strength, 15 magic, 40 skill, 35 speed, 40 luck, 30 defense, and 30 resistance. All 8 of the auras. The difference is, is that each one is on a different kind of cover. So there's the corner, are on, all 4 of the corners are on cover tiles, so they have plus 10 defense to this. They have 40 defense. And then the central tiles have plus 10 resistance. So the idea here is to attack her individual auras with folks that have the ability to damage them. So magic units can still deal damage. For instance, like a, like Yune, uh, Yune, Makaya here, who has actually 52 magical attack, she can easily damage these, but she's only doing, you know, 22 damage. She's definitely not doubling because they're not weighed down by any form, way, shape, or form. And... Micaiah here, you know, even though she's not weighed down either, her maximum speed could not allow her to double. So using magic units to defeat Shira is just totally pointless, especially when you look at her actual stats. Order Incarnate. The creator of the world who uses limitless power to pass judgment on all. Normal attacks do no harm. She has 8 strength, 15 magic, 40 skill, speed and luck, 35 def defense, and... 50 resistance. She is also on a heal stone that gives her 15 avoid. I don't like this. It should be giving her defense as well. She only has 35 defense. 
She comes with Judge. 50 might, 100 hit, 16 white, the miraculous power of the blanker. Her attacks have myriad form and effect. So this weighs her down by 8. Why does her own attack weigh her down? So she only has 32 speed. Blows my mind. And if I was being very honest, I kind of wish she had higher speed if she's going to be weighed down. Either higher speed or higher strength, because I don't think that just like Sephiran, that she should be weighed down in any way, shape, or form. What you're going to find out about Sephiran is something very interesting very shortly. She has S, double S rank in Strike, Fire, Thunder, Wind, Light, and Dark Magics. Not Staves, because Staves are man-made creations, and neither any of the Bjork weapons. She comes with Mantle, nullifies all damage inflicted by weapons not blessed by Yune, restoring HP equal to the unit's luck each turn. Why isn't her luck higher than 40? It's, a, it's kind of abysmal. So she heals 12 HP per turn, plus 40, so she heals 52 HP. Plus, these spirits can heal her as well. Now, each one of her auroras also have mantle, or aura, I should say, have mantle. So they heal 40 each turn as well. They only have 90 HP compared to her 120. But I believe her total HP is 840 because of this. She has aurora on all of her auras, which causes half of all damage received to be reflected back upon the assailant for a shearer only. This only works against units that do not have Nihil and units that do not attack with a KOing blow. So like for instance, if I have Kanegus over here, he attacks one time, does damage, he'll take damage back, but if his second attack KOs the aura, then he does not take damage from that second attack. This chapter is a lot of fun. This boss is a lot of fun, and there are ways to actually defeat her very quickly, especially because you can use the triangle attacks in this game against her auras, and she cannot attack you back with them. So, for instance, if you have Boyd, Roth, and Oscar promoted, you can do triangle attacks against her auras. Or, if you have Alincia and Marsha, as well as Tanith and Sigrun, you can do triangle attacks with them. And because there's four of them, and the ability to Golger, you can do some pretty wild positioning. I've seen Ashira being defeated in literally, like, two turns. I think it's even possible to defeat her in one turn, regardless of how many um, wonderful um, healing there is here. So for instance, like Kanegas here, he's going to have a whopping 70 attack, which means that he is going to do 40, well, yeah, 40 damage times two to each one of the non-cover, so the, the central auras, which is a lot of damage. I think that this is, this whole battle is probably going to take me upwards of maybe five turns. Now, the cool thing about Ashira, one of the reasons why Sanaki gets the Rudol gem, by the way, which gives her plus 10 defense, um, though I'm not using Sanaki because she's just not great for this, this fight particularly. Yes, her Symboline can do something. She'll have 53 attack. It's not like she's useless. But I'm not taking Sanaki or Soth because... They're just worthless at this point in the game concerning fighting Ashira when I could use my dragons and other folks like that, especially because the dragons will stack their blood tide, night tide, white pool all together on my unit. So I could have potentially a unit with plus 10 strength, plus 10 skill, plus 5 magic, plus 5 speed, plus 5 defense and resistance um, attacking Ashira, which is nuts. Incredible. So the thing, the, the fact of the matter is, is that Ashira has multiple map-wide attacks using her judge power. All of them have 50 might, and she has a physical attack, a magical attack. She can silence the whole, the whole um, map, and she reaches everything on the map, literally everything. She can also put everybody to sleep. Yes, you heard that right. She can stun everybody. She can also attack like Sephiran did. She can attack individual units from any distance that she wants. She has no movement, but she needs no movement because she can attack everywhere and do whatever she pleases. And this is just an interesting and awesome boss fight because of that, that factor. And I cannot wait to get into it. But that is going to have to wait until next episode. Yes, this is time for me to call it quits. I want to thank you for joining me. If you like my content, please upvote and follow, or like and subscribe, and while you're at it, have a great and glorious day gaming.